Good morning, YouTube, and welcome back to Yogi Cycle Service. It is Monday morning, and look at that in the background. Look, it's beautiful out in North Carolina. Finally, it's supposed to be 70 today, sunny, no rain. Spring is in the air. Absolutely. Uh, you know, cherry trees here are blooming in North Carolina. My wife was picking flowers uh, out of the, I guess, daffodils out of the front garden, putting them in a vase yesterday. So spring is in the air, and you can tell because people are talking about riding again. Uh, and what they've been talking about, what I've seen over the past two days, two, three days, is people talking about iron butts and, and iron butt riding. For those of you who don't know what Iron Butts is, it's going out and putting in a thousand miles in a 24 hour period. And I want to talk to you about that for a couple minutes today. I've done a few about some of the tips that I've learned and tricks to help make that ride a little bit more comfortable for you. Um, there are three P's that I think about is your plan, your prep, and your pack. And what all is that? And let's just kind of start with plan. Uh, an iron butt ride is it's not hard but it ain't easy either and you really need to plan for an iron butt ride iron butt ride is not something you're like eh, I feel like I can go ride a thousand miles today <laughs> you know, it's you know it's it's not hard but it's not easy either and you really do need to plan for an iron butt ride so if you're gonna do an iron butt ride plan an iron butt ride you know and that comes from okay where are we gonna go are you going to go straight from point A to point B, 1,000 miles? Or are you going to do a 500 miles from A to B and then B back to A? You know, What is your trip going to look like? When I've done them, uh, typically it's been a out from point A to point B, rest for, for a little bit, and then turn around and go back to point A. Um, and a plan. Plan is very important. You know, How many miles can you get uh, per tank? So spacing out, properly spacing out your exits and your fuel ups are critical in doing an iron butt ride. Your pack is critical. How many people are in your pack with you? Because that's going to determine how long you're going to stop at a gas station to fuel up. You know, the more people in your pack, the, slow, the longer it's going to take, the slower you're going to go. Period. So when thinking about pack size, you know, really try to keep that to, I would say, probably four people or less. Because when you get more than four people, you know, your gas stops are going are gonna to get longer. Because people are going to be talking about their ride. And people are going to be talking about the trip. And, oh yeah, hold on, i got to go pee quick. Run inside, go to the bathroom, and you're waiting another five minutes for them, for them to go. So if you're going to do it pack size, and my advice should be four people or less. Try planning one for last summer. And we had a pack of about three like this is perfect well then it came down to the week before like all right iron butt next weekend we're all in right and the other three are like well you know i got you know my daughter has this my son has that and next thing you know pack size was just me and i'm like well i'm not going to do this just for fun so i guess we scrapped the iron butt this summer we'll try again next summer but planning is important and my suggestion to you is that, you know if you've got a, a pack of four figure out who gets the shortest mileage per tank and then plan your ride out according to what they can get so if they're on a bike it gets 130 miles per tank plan your gas stops like every 110 and then plan on taking a 10 minute gas stop you know splash and dash stretch your legs you got 10 minutes um 10 minutes per stop 15 tops uh because you figure you figure if you're getting 130 miles a tank and it's a thousand miles, you're gonna be making eight to nine fuel, I don't have a calculator, but you're gonna be making eight to nine fuel stops. And that right there at you know 10 minutes a stop is an hour over an hour, almost an hour and a half gone from your ride. And you're trying to do this in a 24 hour period and you don't want it to take forever. So planning it is important. Also know that if you're gonna do an iron butt ride and you're gonna go up a highway, you know, up an interstate, like, you know, 95, 81, 77, 40, 20, you know, whatever that interstate is, if it's an interstate, you're going to get, you know, you're going to average 80 miles an hour. If you're averaging 80 miles an hour, you're getting closer to that 1,000 miles a lot faster if you go up, like, US-1. <laughs> so you go up US-1, up the East Coast, beautiful ride, but you're going to be doing 
55, 60, and then you're gonna go through a small town where it goes down to 35, and then you're gonna hit some stoplights, and you're gonna pick back up again. It's gonna take you a whole lot longer to complete an iron butt ride doing up a US-1 versus going up 81, you know? And uh, that all comes part of your plan. The other thing I would suggest about that is you get an early morning start. The last time uh, I did one, met my buddies at the Waffle House at 5 a.m., ate some breakfast, on the road by 6, gone. If you don't start your iron butt until, hey, we're going to be up at 9, we're going to take off at 10, you're going to be riding more hours in the dark and at night than you will be during the day. And it is much more comfortable, much better to get this done in a daytime ride. Because the times I've done it, um, it again, depends upon your brakes and how long they take. Uh, but I would say a lot, you know, 16 to 20 hours to do this. Uh, I mean, even 16 to 22 hours to do this, depending upon, you know, what machines you're riding, how far they can go in between tanks, and how long your brakes are, and what roads you're on are all going to depend upon how quick you can get this done. Um, I remember I did 2,100 miles in four days, wasn't technically an iron butt, but I did uh, 750 miles in a little over 10 hours. So, you know, an extra... 250 miles yeah I could have done that and I, I I was solo too my gas brakes were only 10 minutes and I was blasting up the highway um, but you know if you if you do it right you can get it done in 16 hours or less but it depends upon what kind of roads you're on it depends what kind of machine you're on so that's plan prep uh, make sure your bikes are ready you know and obviously doing an iron butt is is your level of comfort is going to depend upon what kind of machine you're on if you're on a touring bike, it's going to be a whole lot easier than on a soft tail or a sporty. Uh, if you're on a soft tail, it won't be as easy as a touring bike, but it'll be easier than a sporty, especially if you put a windshield on it. Uh, without a windshield, it's going to be rough. <laughs> I'm just telling you now, to try to do that many miles in a 24-hour period without some kind of wind barrier or windshield, uh, absolutely, it can be done, but you're just going to be a whole lot more beat up by the end of it. Um, also... Uh, when thinking about that, uh, make sure, you know, especially if you do it during the summer months, that you are very hydrated. Uh, that wind will take moisture from you. You, you know, especially in the summer months, you're sweating and you don't know it. And that wind is evaporating that moisture off you fast. So make sure you're hydrated. Get plenty of water when you're doing this. It is, you know, you don't want to pass out. <laughs> <laughs> in the middle of this ride, you don't want to pass out. Likewise, you don't want to go out and back, you know, get 800 miles into the ride, you're still 200 miles from home, and you just, you got no more gas left in your tank. I'm not talking about your bike, I'm talking about your body. So be hydrated, make sure you're getting food, get keeping food in you, you know, just as much as you need to focus on making sure your bike is ready, you know, your tires are good, your oil is fresh, you know, you've done a T-clock inspection on your bike. If you don't know what that is, Google T-clock. It'll give you an inspection list. We're going to be doing a video on that soon and what that looks like. But make sure your bike is ready. Again, you don't want to be 800 miles in this trip, 200 miles from home, and have a breakdown. And it could have been something that could have been prevented. So make sure your bikes are ready. Make sure your body's ready. Make sure you are fed. Um, make sure you're all hydrated. I would also highly advise you wear, you know, if it's summer and it's hot, yeah, a long sleeve t-shirt, you know, protect a full face helmet, keep the sun off you because you will burn, you will burn like a potato chip <laughs> and you don't, that's going to suck for the next few days, pardon my French. So make sure you are covered, uh, areas that are not covered, make sure you got some, you know, some SPF sport 50 suntan lotion on so you're not burn up like a potato chip, uh, protect your body protect your machine, make sure your machine is ready to go, make sure your air pressure is checked, make sure you've done top to bottom, you've covered everything, and that's all part of planning too, right? Getting your bike ready before you're ready to go. Um, getting your clothing ready, making sure you're protected, make sure you don't have clothes that are loose and bagging or flopping in the wind. That flopping will create chafing on you, and it will start to really irritate and hurt for a while. So you don't wanna wear loose, baggy, floppy clothes. You wanna keep stuff that's, you know, snug down and tight that way the winds whipping by you and you're not chafing parts of your body it also creates exhaustion when that wind is flopping shirts on you that makes you tired after a while and uh 
Now there is an association out there called IBA, Iron Butt Association. For those who are interested, you can actually send them, after you're done, you send them like 35 bucks. What you do is you keep all your gas receipts so you can show where you started and your journey along the way with your gas receipts. And I believe you send them, last I saw, this was probably 15 years ago, I looked at it, but you send them copies of your gas receipts uh, and 35 bucks and they'll send you like some kind of certificate and patch. It's the Iron Butt Association, the IBA. Uh, Google that, you can go to their webpage and get uh, information on it. Uh, Iron Butts are definitely fun, but I wouldn't pay 35 bucks for a certificate and hat. You know, I know I did it. I don't need somebody to show a patch to go, look at me, I'm an Iron Butt man. You know, and the other thing I would advise is have a good seat on your motorcycle. Speaking of iron butt, uh, Mustang seats. My book, I did it on my uh, fat boy with a Mustang seat. And yeah, it wasn't easy, um, but it wasn't that bad either. So uh, a Mustang seat, highly recommended for an iron butt ride compared to the stock seat. Because with a stock seat, you truly will have an iron butt when you're done. Uh, so they are fun. They are enjoyable, um, especially when done with friends. So, you know, just be prepared. These these rides like that, they take thought and preparation. So plan them out. Uh, go do one. And maybe I'll plan another one for this summer, see if I can get somebody to go this time. And if so, maybe I'll put a, by then I'll have some helmet cams on and we can record some of the journey and some of the conversations along the way. That's what I had. That's what I wanted to share. I thank you for liking, subscribing, sharing. Hope you got some useful tips out of this. Thank you for joining Yogi Cycle Service and I'll talk to you soon. Have a great day. Take care. Deuces.